All done. Are you really going to live on it? Why not? It's romantic, isn't it? Yeah. It's horrible, Ken. Don't listen to him, Ken. And it's small. <laughs> Who built it? Airfix. It's compact. Jeez, you. Small. How's Popeye then? A bit short of olive oil. Any calls? <laughs> Pardon? Any calls? No, no, fuck it all. How much longer can we go on like this? Oh, come on, Rocky. Oh. <sighs> Give it a chance, eh? Oh, Ken. We're not going to have a cash flow problem again, are we, mate? I mean, my landlady gets a bit nasty every week Don't now. worry, Rocky, don't worry. Things are about to pick up. Huh. Yeah? I can guarantee it. What? What's this look, Harry Crawford? You've been up to something? You haven't seen the evening papers, have you? Why? Well, well just you wait, mate. Just you wait. We're just off to get them. Very pleasant. It's a very pleasant way to make a million pounds. Cheers. How long to go? 40, 45 minutes, maybe. Das is so good. Hey? I said, das is very good. What's that? Oh, no, you don't believe it. Oh, what's wrong? That sounds like the drive. Shaft. Oh. Well, is it serious? I, how long to fix it? We've got a rendezvous in an hour. Well, that depends on whether someone around here knows a welder. Come on, give us a hand. I don't believe it. I could kill you. Why didn't you get a proper bloody boat? Bloody brilliant. So what do you suggest we do? I don't know. You can't park here. It's private property. Says when? Since five days ago. Crawford Boone Securities. You must be joking. No, I'm not, no. You park down the road. Right. Sorry. Sorry, Chief. Now, how do we meet the boat? Crawford Boone Security. CBS. Incorporated Boone Investigation. Crawford Boone Security. Nottingham. <laughs> London. <laughs> Paris. Tokyo! I need to borrow your boat. Oh, I don't know if that's possible. You know, we're right in the middle of tea. There's no alternative, I'm afraid. Who is it? He says he wants to borrow our boat. I need it, I'm afraid. I'm awfully sorry. Oh. I see. We've got to get that sign fixed up at the front gate. We can't allow people to park there. Is he all right? What do you think of the arrangement, Harry? Oh, terrific. Hey, come on, look at this. The Evening Post, page six. Come on. Blimey. Not bad, eh, Kenneth, eh? <laughs> well, it's your money, Harry. But, uh... Well, there's no point in doing things halfway, is it, Kenneth, eh? How much? It's quite a lot. That much? Look, that phone's going to be hot, I tell you. Hot. What did I tell you, eh? <laughs> Crawford Boot Security. Yeah. Yeah. Line two, Ken. 
Hello? Yeah, Ken Boone? It's the plumber. Right. You take the woman and get this boat to the rendezvous. I'll take the old man as hostage and find a phone and tell them what's happened, okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. What? Give me the gun, then. What do you want the gun for? Because I haven't got one, have I? You don't need a gun. She's a woman. You can handle a woman, can't you? It's my gun. Right, right. Well, she's not going to try anything. I've got her husband, haven't I? It's not disused. You were misinformed. It's a detective agency. Crawford and Boone security. I'm not getting shirty, I'm just telling you. Oh, okay, 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 what do we do now? I don't know if there's a boat, because I can't get close enough to the river to find out, can I? Okay. Okay, we'll do that. Cheers. So? Well, go to the other side, check it tonight, and uh, give it till morning. How's that? Well, it looks great, Harry, but who's going to see it up there? There's a lot of traffic goes up and down this river, Ken. More than you'd think. And I bet none of them have thought of buying a burglar alarm until now. Funny people, in my experience, you know, river people. What's that supposed to mean? They're the sort of people who might just think of phoning up a private detective, you know. Ken! Don't tell us! It's a job! A definite job! What did I tell you? He sounded really urgent. I said you would bring him back. Hey! Did you remember to ask him how he heard about us? Yeah, directory inquiries! Oh, well, it's early days, isn't it? So, this is your fiance? Yes. How long has she been going to the hypnotist? Hypnotherapist, about three months. And what makes you suspect malpractice? Mr. Boone, we've been engaged for nearly a year. We've known each other for three and a half. I know Gillian extremely well. Extremely well. And when one knows someone extremely well, one can tell when they're not being themselves. Well, if that's the case, why did she go to the therapist in the first place? Actually, it was I who suggested it. She was having what they call anxiety attacks. I have some friends at my firm who've been rather successfully treated with hypnotherapy, so I sent Gillian along. I didn't realize what it would lead to. I mean, forgive me, but if the therapist is, to use your words, seducing her, well, surely that's uh, quite a serious abuse of his position, isn't it? For two months now, she's become obsessed by him, infatuated even. It's Mr. Phillips says this, or that, or... Geoffrey, rather, as she now calls him. What is at present impossible is to accuse him of anything. If I did, I'd land myself a very nasty writ for slander. That's why I need some evidence. So you want us to bug his surgery, do you? Find out if she's having an affair with him? Exactly. Discreetly. Or if they're about to. I will, of course, guarantee legal cover for you and your company. Yeah, well, I'll have to have a word with my um, associate, Mr. Crawford. He's got all the know-how on surveillance. Tell him I'm willing to pay a set fee of £3,000. Half on contract, half on delivery of the tapes. £3,000? And a further 1500 if there is enough evidence to make a prosecution. She has her appointment tomorrow at four in the afternoon. And again on Saturday. Varnish and door solicitors. Well, it should be straight enough. Right, let's give the good doctor a ring then. What's wrong with me? Mother complex. <laughs> now, come on, be serious. All right, insomnia. Yes, I like that. That should be true as well.
Yes, hello. Yes, hello, Ken Boone. Yeah. This morning? OK. 11, 11.30. Morning, Ken. What's the nature of the problem, then? OK, well, I'll talk to you about it then. Fine. All right. Bye. Ask where he heard about us. Mr West, could you tell us how you heard about us? Evening Post. OK, mate. Thank you very much. Right. Any others? No, first of the day. So, how was your first night on the boat? Wet. Oh, no. Didn't sink, did it? No. Couldn't sleep a wink. Condensation. <sighs> no, nothing. Not the same. Not, not a thing. All right. What would be in touch, Mr. Marchant? Yes. And don't worry. Excuse me, please. Thank you. Excuse me, please. Yeah, what time can you come in? Excuse me, can I come in? Thank you very much. Yes, call for Boone's curtain. Right, now then, who's next then? No, uh, Miss Armitage. No worry, I'm very sorry, we're in a bit late. Mr. Jarvis. Mr. Jarvis? Mrs. Jarvis, can I beg your pardon? Yeah. Pardon? Oh, yeah, fine. Just, uh, just hold up. Let's come this way. Because it's only been like this, you know, since we advertised. It's, uh, it's very quiet before. When did you last see this, um... Uh, when did you last see this Corporal Brodsky? 1944? Well, uh, what regiment was he with, love, when he was billeted over here? Yeah. OK, Mrs Josephs, we'll get back to you. No, well, I mean, I, I don't cover all of the United States, you know what I mean? Bit out of my range. Yeah, OK, I've got your number. Ken, line three. Right. Hello, Ken Boone? Yeah, can I um, have your name, please? You don't want to give your name? Look, Mr Boone, this is desperate. I'm desperate. I have to talk to you. Yes, OK, well, um, I'll see what I can do. Can you give me some details? Do you know that the steamboat? Oh, good. I'll be outside in two hours. Oh, I'll know you. And, Mr Boone, you must be there. I think I've done something terrible. <laughs> Hi. Are you, um... It's a nice place. You're staying here. Uh, no. I I'm afraid I can't tell you. Well, uh, what about your name? I can't tell you that either. Well, that's the start. Do I get to know why you've called me out here? I want you to deliver something for me. It's very important. It's really a matter of life and death. Well, why didn't you go to a courier? I need complete confidentiality. I need your assurance that you won't tell anyone, not even the police, nobody. Why? I can't say. Why not? It's nothing illegal. I just want you to deliver a letter for me. I wouldn't involve you in anything illegal. Yeah, but I, I still know... I need to know a little bit more about it. I, I just can't explain yet. If you won't help me, I'll just have to get someone else. I didn't say I wouldn't help you. I, I just... Mm. Desperate, Mr. Boone. Believe me, trust me. I, I'll tell you everything later, I promise you. Just deliver this letter for me this afternoon, and then meet me here the day after tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'll explain everything then. Well, I suppose it is just a letter. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. I must go now. Hang on a minute. It's all right, don't worry. I just, um, out of interest, how did you get in touch with me? Boone Investigations, from the paper? Oh, no, I saw your sign on the riverbank. Right. OK, 10 o'clock, day after tomorrow. How's your back? I don't know. I'm right here, then. Excuse me, you can't just breeze in here like this, you know. I'm sorry, I just happen to have an unfortunate manner. Don's plea, private investigator. Just want to talk to your boss, that's all. Um, can I ask what it's about? This. 
What can I say? You understand what this means to my business? Yeah, and I'm sorry. Already two of my clients have cancelled contracts. They see an advert in the paper like that, and they leave. Yeah, I, I know, believe me, I've got every sympathy with you, but, I mean, we've got to earn a living and all. Mr. Boone, I'm not even meeting expenses. I've got to pay the rent. I've got an office in town. A secretary. Look, that advert was my partner's idea. Come back tomorrow, have a word with him. You're Ken Boone, aren't you? Boone Investigations. Yeah. So you're saying you don't want to help? Well, what do you want? Why don't we join forces? The, the case of Mr. West, for example. Who? The guy looking for his daughter. I need two more days to crack it. Let me finish the case, Mr. Boone. Subcontract me, if you like. West, I'd forgotten about him. All right, you crack that one, split 50-50 with me. OK? The deal? OK, thanks. Yeah. Right. OK? Uh, yes? It's just one thing. Yeah. Well, I'm in a hurry, mate. My secretary. She's away for a few days. Laura, Laura, come here, love. She'll help you out, OK? This is Mr. Speed. He's going to be with us for a while. Oh, she take me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Insomnia is a very subtle complaint, Harry. Sometimes the prime cause is, in fact, lack of sleep. Hey. <laughs> or rather, the anxiety of not sleeping. Sometimes all one needs to do is to break the cycle. No, this is, this is come and gone, you know. I mean, I'll sleep very well for a couple of nights and then, bang, it's got me again, you know. Can you help me at all? Well... We can make an appointment for some time next week. Next week? We've got to do anything now, please. Um, I'll check my appointments book. Won't be a moment. The only time I can manage today is between six and eight this evening. Would that be suitable? Yes, it would. OK, good. Uh, I, just, I, I can make some calls and, and do my shopping. And uh, No, that, that's fine. OK, six o'clock it is, then. Oh, what a relief. I've got a letter from Mr. Lowsley. Is he in? Who are you? Ken Boone. I'm just the delivery boy. I'll give it to him. Um, I've got to deliver it to him personally. I said I'll give it to him. What is your name? Boone. Ken Boone. Boone? Oh, come in! Boone! Uh, have we met? Uh, I, I won't be long. It's, it's just that um, typing's not my strong point. I'm, I'm much more your sort of out and about detective, me. Um. Where's the boat? What boat? The boat with my stuff on it. Her boat. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who she is. I didn't know she had a boat. Oh, Mrs. This lady rings you out of the blue, asks you to deliver a letter, and you don't even ask her name. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm a private detective. I mean, these things happen all the time. I know you're a private detective, and I know where you're from. That's why I don't believe a word you're saying. Who are you working for? What? Right. Hit him. Me? I said hit him. I wouldn't hit me. No. I don't think I should, Chief. I don't want to get involved, you know. All I did was deliver that letter. You think you're damn clever, don't you? No. I'm absolutely convinced I'm the worst informed person in this room. All right. 
Kick him out. <laughs> I can see myself out. It's been a pleasure. This is all your fault for leaving Dilks on his own, you stupid, chinless prat. Me? What she want? She's got the silk. She wants to swap her old man for it. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Maybe. What I don't like is the coincidence of Mr. Boone popping up at the riverside. I smell something fishy here. Get me Hank and Peter. Hi. Yes. Mm, she's very nice. Now, just as an exercise, so that you can feel how much you're in control of your thoughts, I want you to think of the very first thing you can remember. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Good. So, casting your mind back, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about now? Eddie's got my engine. Who's Eddie? My cousin. Cousin Eddie. And what's he doing with it? He's eating it. He's eating your engine? Yes, it's a chocolate engine. It's a Easter. What else? Mum's not there. Second story, Sam, is it? Yeah, that's right. I'm Doray. What's in the top drawer, then? Oh, it's just recent stuff. You know, case is still pending. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm not much good at filing, either. It's not my forte. I'm much more your sort of out-and-about sort of detective, me. So now, Harry, what about the present? What makes you anxious in the present? Money. I haven't got any money to pay the wages next week. Does that make you feel bad? Mm, yes. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. But it's not really your fault, is it? You're doing the best you can, aren't you? No, no, it's not really, no. No. I do a damn, damn good job. I mean, without me, there wouldn't be any work at all. That's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. What else? I'm doing something terrible, Jeff. Tell me. What? I'm embarrassed. You can tell me. That's why I'm here. I took this job on. Go on. I didn't really want to. Yes? Bug in your office. You're bugging my office? Hmm. It's one of your clients. Her boyfriend thinks that you're having an affair. Wake up now, Harry. No, I'm in total control, Jeff. I know. One, two, three. Wake up. I'm sorry. I really am. Genuinely and sincerely sorry. Strange. I suddenly felt that I had to tell you. And you caught him snooping, did you? Definitely, just before he went home. Did he see you? Yeah. 
He made up some excuse about how he hadn't been getting any cases recently and he wanted to see how we managed to. I don't believe him. No. I think we should do some snooping on Mr Speed, don't you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'll check out that address. The office one. What, tonight? Yes, Rocky, tonight. And I don't want him getting suspicious. Treat him nice and gentle. Just find out what he's up to. Where's Harry? He's still in therapy. <laughs> Ken, why do I have to do all the night work? Because, my son, I'm going to get myself a pie and chips, a mug of tea, and hopefully some sleep. Oh, right. It's sunk. <sighs> oh, yes. I'm afraid so. You two from Lowsley. Where's the boat? You sunk it. The boat, the other boat. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking. I'm telling you the truth. They don't damage the goods. I do it my way. Now tell us, where's the boat, please? I haven't got a clue. Just let me break his arm. Come on, he doesn't know. I said, come on. Hey, you tell the woman. She knows what the boss is going to do when she doesn't turn up with the stuff, hmm? <laughs> what stuff? I'll explain, look, just come through. Yeah, what's all this about? I mean, it's half past two in the morning, I was in bed. Yes, I know, just come through. Hi. Hello, Mr. Boone. Bloody hell, what's happened to you? I caught my lip in my zip. Oh, all right. Uh, sit down, Mr. Speed, uh, please. Uh, it's all right, I'll stand. Um, I, I thought this was an emergency. Yes, I, I, know, I know. I know it's a bit late and all that, and I'll explain all. I just thought that since you were going to work for us, that we ought to have a little bit of a chat. You know, sort of interview. What now? Well, you know, to find out, like, uh, who you are. Oh, well, I'm... Uh, hey? I told you I'm uh, Donald Speed. Right, investigator, I gave you my card, that's me. Yeah, with a funny address. I moved. When? Oh, <laughs> three, four weeks ago, yeah. No, you didn't. You're working for you-know-who, aren't you? Who? Those people two hours ago that slapped me about and sunk my boat, that you-know-who. I really, I don't know any you-know-who, really. Okay, enough of this, Harry. May I? Yes, Ken, go ahead, I'll have a good laugh. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, well, you better start telling me some lies. I am not a violent man by nature, but I don't like having my house sunk or be done over. I can't tell you. Tell me what? <laughs> tell me what? Um, um, yes. Um, yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm police. <laughs> hey, are you sure? Look, CID, Detective Tyson Speed, checking my sock, my left sock, please. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Sorry to keep you waiting. Sergeant, perhaps you'd be good enough to come in and explain to these people what's been going on. Right. Right to follow me, please. About two weeks ago, uh, a man called... Uh, Dilks rang us to uh, inform us he'd been approached by some uh, shady characters wanting to rent his barge. In fact, one of them was an old mate of his called uh, John Lowsley. Anyway, uh, on our instructions, uh, Dilks agreed to do a run for them, carrying some... Uh, Stolen German silk up the Trent. The place that they intended to land this stuff, according to Dilks, was the only totally disused and run-down bit of dockside on the river. Namely, your place. So what colour did you say? Well, I can't be sure, but I thought it was blue. Or maybe green. Or perhaps a bluey green. I just don't know. I sure it was a boat. Well, 
just as if. How can you not remember what it looked like? So we're sitting there, all ready and waiting to pounce. Catch everyone red-handed. Night before last, when lo and behold, what happens? Nothing happens. His boat didn't turn up, did it? So we must conclude either Dilks did a very, very nasty dirty on us, or the gang sussed him out and did a very, very nasty dirty on our Mr. Dilks. Speed. Yes, sir. Don't get carried away. Sorry, sir. So then you come snooping on us? Well, at the time, we had good reason to believe that you might be involved in some way. Oh, we happened to notice your advert in the post. We thought it might be some sort of signal to the rest of the gang. Or something of that nature. I'm sorry to say we were a little deceitful. We made a few phone calls to your office as clients to make my appearing a little more... a little more credible. I'm To be plain, if we make a mess of this case, it could be very embarrassing. This gang is about the leakiest outfit in the history of crime. Basically, we would appreciate it if you'd just uh, keep it quiet till we sort it out. Yeah, no problem. Well, where does all that leave you with your mystery woman? I don't know. I reckon she's involved, but she's not cooking. How can? How? Well, this could be serious. She could be in danger, you know. I know, Harry, I know. When did you say you were going to see her again? Tomorrow morning. Where? In a pub up the river. But that's not where she lives. Uh, any clues? No. Except she reckons she saw our sign. The day before yesterday. She must have been on the opposite bank. Right before or in the morning. You've got a good eyesight, Ken. Yeah. Or on a boat. Yes, yes. She must have been on a boat. There were some boats about, mate. In the evening and in the morning. What sort of boats? I've gone up early. I remember looking. I'm trying. Because otherwise, we've got to go back up to speed. I can't place the boat. <laughs> what you need, mate, is a hypnotist. <laughs> <laughs> a hypnotherapist? No. It was definitely called the Dutch something. Yes, definitely. A uh, Dutch mobster or lobster. It, it was like this one, actually. It's called the Chase Tramp. Do you know to how many of these places we've gone to now? Twenty-one. How many more? A hundred? I'm sorry, but it was like this one. Maybe bigger. And definitely with a blue funnel. And definitely not a white roof. Good. Nice to Thanks, see you. Jeff. Nice to see you, Jeff. You must be Ken Boone. Hello, Doctor. Glad you could help us. Not at all. Harry's told me what's required. Would you like to come through? Okay. How did you sleep last night? On a police waiting room bench, as it happens. But not too badly at all, as it turns out. You may be interested to know that Gillian has cancelled her engagement to Mr Farlish. Yes, I know. He rang up and cancelled his cheque. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, I shouldn't laugh. Let's go through and make Ken comfortable. Yeah. Sorry. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking, what am I doing sleeping on this cold boat? And now? I'm awake. I'm wet. I hear a noise. I put the light on. What sort of noise is it? A splash. I go on deck with my torch. There's somebody there. I look at the water, but there's no ripples. I go back down. And what? There's another splash. 
And I think it's ducks. Does it sound like ducks? I don't know. I don't know what ducks sound like. And I think these must be enormous bloody ducks. And then? And then? I wake up again, again and again. And then it's the morning. And I feel like death. But what can you see on the river? I see a boat. There was definitely a boat going backwards. That's funny, I'm thinking. Or maybe it's normal. It's going upstream. It was painted half white. And it had a name. Something, something tramp. Something C.H. Tramp. Try to remember the first word. No, I can't. No, I'm going for a wash ashore. Now, this is wonderful. Now, let's go back to the day before. You were on the bank, putting up a sign, in the evening. Yes, Harry was with me. There was a boat over there, with a cargo on it. I can't see the name. Look closer! No good. It definitely had a cargo on it. Never mind. I'm sure we've got most of what was there. All right, Ken. Yeah, fine. Amazing. Better than the video. Oh, we got the name anyway. The CH something Trump. I think that's about all we'll need, Jeff. Good. I'm glad. I've got it. What? The splashes. That was the cargo being dumped in the river. <laughs> There's a couple of grappling hooks. Nothing yet, then? No, nothing. You? Well, there's no record of any boat on the Trent with the word tramp in it. Rocky's just phoned. He's checked out two of the marinas. Luckily, most of them seem to be downstream, so he's only got another half dozen to go. Would you like a cup of tea? Mm hmm. Looks like the net's closing in, then. Huh. Why don't you believe me? Just believe me. Ring them. Just ring the police. Look, how stupid do you think I am? Of course, of course. It's got to be it. Oh, thank God for that. Don't lose it. No chance, yes. mate. No chance. What's that? Little place called Marsh Lane. How long? Okay. You found him? 90% certain. She with him? He doesn't know. Give Harry a hand with that, eh? Okay. Stay with him. It's on the phone. Yeah. Hello, it's Ken Boone. Can I come and talk to you? We found the silk. Hi. Hi. Um, I didn't get your name. Mrs. Walters. Hello, Mrs. Walters. Um, look, I need to talk to you. Can I come in? Please. Keep your eye. Mr. Dilks, I presume. I honestly think the best plan would be to hand the whole thing over to the police. No. No. What are you worried about, your husband? He's not my husband. He's my landlord. He'd come to collect the rent. <sighs> I just don't want poor Mr. Roberts to come to any harm. Even if he is a profiteering little swine. And he won't come to any harm if I can just give these people back their silk. I don't even know why I acted like I did. It's just that 
He was such a wimp. And I was in the army, you know, and I'd had enough of being pushed around. Well, I still think the most sensible thing to do is to tell all this to the police. Definitely. Ken, I've just spoken to Harry. He's got all the silk out the river and he wants to know what's happening. Well? Just let me go through with this rendezvous. All right, but I'm coming with you. It could turn nasty. All right. I agree. Wonderful. Get hold of Harry. Tell him where to meet us. And tell him full speed ahead. Sorry? Full speed ahead. Oh, yeah. Come on, do you know what the time is? What? What are you ready? I've got to have a shave. Oh, come on, get dressed, come on. What about Harry? He's on his way, he's waiting for speed. Good. You better put that away, innit? We're late. Oh, put your foot down. Oh, you were in with the woman after all. Seems that way. Where's Mr. Roberts? He's my insurance. I couldn't be sure you hadn't brought the police with you. You haven't brought the police with you, have you? No, we haven't. All right. Dilks. Yeah? All right. How could you let yourself be taken out by her? Well, she's a lot stronger than she looks, you know. We want to see Roberts. All right, all right. You'll get him. Call them up. Harry, I won't book you. Just go. Hello, Mr. Roberts, dear. Are you all right? <laughs> Mustn't grumble. What a pretty pickle. All right, all right. A touching reunion. Now, let's have the bales and get out of here. And you too. Expecting someone? No. Better not be. Look, Chief. What? Well, I've done my bit, you know. You nonce. You're the same as the rest of this gang. A chancer. Well, I prefer to get my wife. Where is he? We'll give it time. What's going on? What's going on, eh? Stay where you are! Idiots. Right. John Lowsley. You made it then. Detective Sergeant Speed. You're under arrest, John. I don't think so. Now, that's not a very sensible thing to do. 
Come on, John. This place all around you. I don't see any. Get in the car. Move! You! Out! Hey. Chief! Out! Out! Now! Get in the driving Chances seat. Chances of you getting away with this. Chief. Better be good, for your sake. Hold on. Where's the woman? Is nobody practical anymore? Good morning, madam. Uh, Detective Sergeant Speed. Could I just uh, take this uh, off you? And uh, everything's under control now, madam. You've done nothing but moan since I got it. It's too big. Too well, so it is. <laughs> what did you want it for? The Chase Tramp. I mean, what kind of a name is that for a boat? I like it. Yeah, it's romantic. Ah. What is spelt wrong? Hey, hey what is spelt wrong? Bless him. <laughs> no, no, it's just that, well, I, I think it could have been a bit more sensible with the reward money. Harry, this is sensible. Yes. I would have thought you'd have had enough of boats to last you a lifetime. Look, this one I can really live on. It's more like a house. What's that? Oh, no. Ken, I think you're going to need that welder again. <laughs> now what's funny? <laughs> it's just that it's getting more like a house every minute. <laughs> Well, one can tell when they're not being themselves. Well, if that's the case, why did she go to the therapist in the first place? Actually, it was I who suggested it. She was having what they call anxiety attacks. I have some friends at my firm who've been rather successfully treated with hypnotherapy, so I sent Gillian along. I didn't realize what it would lead to. I mean, forgive me, but if the therapist is 
to use your word, seducing her. Well, surely that's uh, quite a serious abuse of his position, isn't it? For two months now, she's become obsessed by him, infatuated even. It's Mr. Phillips says this or that or... Jeffrey, rather, as she now calls him. What is at present impossible is to accuse him of anything. If I did, I'd land myself a very nasty writ for slander. That's why I need some evidence. So you want us to bug his surgery, do you? Find out if she's having an affair with him? Exactly. Discreetly. Or if they're about to. I will, of course, guarantee legal cover for you and your company. Yeah, well, I'll have to have a word with my um, associate, Mr Crawford. He's got all the know-how on surveillance. Tell him I'm willing to pay a set fee of £3,000. Half on contract, half on delivery of the tapes. £3,000. And a further 1500 if there is enough evidence to make a prosecution. She has her appointment tomorrow at four in the afternoon and again on Saturday. Varnish and door solicitors. Well, it should be straight enough. Right, let's give the good doctor a ring then. What's wrong with me? Mother complex. <laughs> now, come on, be serious. All right, insomnia. Yes, I like that. That should be true as well. Yes, hello. Yes, hello, Ken Boone. Yeah. This morning? OK. 11, 11.30. Morning, Ken. What's the nature of the problem, then? OK, well, I'll talk to you about it then. Fine. All right. Bye. Ask where he heard about us. Mr West, could you tell us how you heard about us? Evening Post. OK, mate. Thank you very much. Bye. Any others? No, first of the day. So, how was your first night on the boat? Wet. Oh, no. Didn't sink, did it? No. Couldn't sleep a wink. Condensation. <laughs> no, nothing. Not the same. Not, not a thing. All right. London. <laughs> Paris, Tokyo! I need to borrow your boat. Oh, I don't know if that's possible. You know, we're right in the middle of tea. There's no alternative, I'm afraid. Who is it? He says he wants to borrow our boat. I need it, I'm afraid. I'm awfully sorry. Oh. I see. We've got to get that sign fixed up at the front gate. We can't allow people to park there. You're right. What do you think of the arrangement, Harry? Oh, terrific. 
Hey, come on, look at this. The Evening Post, page six. Go on. Blimey. Not bad, eh, Kenneth, eh? <laughs> well, it's your money, Harry. It's, uh... Well, there's no point in doing things halfway, is it, Kenneth, eh? How much? It was quite a lot. That much? Look, that phone's gonna be hot, I tell you. Hot. <coughs> what did I tell you, eh? <laughs> Crawford Boot Security? Yeah? Yeah. Line two, Ken. Hello? Yeah, Ken Boone? It's the plumber. Right. You take the woman and get this boat to the rendezvous. I'll take the old man as hostage and find a phone and tell them what's happened, okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. What? Give me the gun, then. What do you want the gun for? Cos I haven't got one, have I? You don't need a gun. She's a woman. You can handle a woman, can't you? It's my gun. Right, right. Well, she's not going to try anything. I've got her husband, haven't I? It's not disused. You were misinformed. It's a detective agency. Crawford and Boone Security. I'm not getting shirty, I'm just telling you. Oh, okay, 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 what do we do now? I don't know if there's a boat, because I can't get close enough to the river to find out, can I? Okay. Okay, we'll do that. Cheers. So? Well, go to the other side, check it tonight, and uh, give it till morning. How's that? Well, it looks great, Harry, but who's going to see it up there? There's a lot of traffic goes up and down this river, Ken. More than you'd think. And I bet none of them have thought of buying a burglar alarm until now. Funny people, in my experience, you know, river people. What's that supposed to mean? They're the sort of people who might just think of phoning up a private detective, you know. Ken! Don't tell us! It's a job! A definite job! What did I tell you? He sounded really urgent. I said you would bring him back. Hey! Did you remember to ask him how he heard about us? Yeah, directory inquiries! Oh, well, it's early days, isn't it? So, this is your fiance? Yes. How long has she been going to the hypnotist? Hypnotherapist, about three months. And what makes you suspect malpractice? Mr. Boone, we've been engaged for nearly a year. We've known each other for three and a half. I know Gillian extremely well. Extremely well. And when one knows someone extremely well... Yeah, I, I believe me, I've got every sympathy with you, but, I mean, we've got to earn a living and all. Mr. Boone, I'm not even meeting expenses. I've got to pay the rent. Got an office in town, a secretary. Look, that advert was my partner's idea. Come back tomorrow, have a word with him. You're Ken Boone, aren't you? Boone Investigations? Yes. So you're saying you don't want to help? Well, what do you want? Why don't we join forces? The case of Mr. West, for example. Who? The guy looking for his daughter. I need two more days to crack it. Let me finish the case, Mr. Boone. Subcontract me, if you like. West, I'd forgotten about him. All right, you crack that one, split 50-50 with me, OK? The deal? OK, thanks. Yeah. Right. OK? Uh, yes? It's just one thing. Yeah, well, I'm in a hurry, mate. My secretary, she's away for a few days. Laura, Laura, come in, love. She'll help you out, OK? This is Mr Speed, he's going to be with us for a while. Oh, she's typing. Brilliant. Brilliant. Insomnia is a very subtle complaint, Harry. Sometimes the prime cause is, in fact, lack of sleep. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> or rather, the anxiety of not sleeping. Sometimes all one needs to do is to break the cycle. No, this is, this is come and gone, you know. I mean, I'll sleep very well for a couple of nights and then, bang, it's got me again, you know. Mm. Can you help me at all? Well, we can make an appointment for some time next week. Next week? Can't you do anything now? 
Please. Um, I'll check my appointments book. Won't be a moment. I'm afraid the only time I can manage today is between six and eight this evening. Would that be suitable? Yes, it would. OK, good. Uh, I, just, I, I can make some calls and, and do my shopping and... Uh, no, that, that's fine. OK, six o'clock it is, then. Oh, what a relief. I've got a letter from Mr. Lowsley. Is he in? Who are you? Ken Boone. I'm just the delivery boy. I'll give it to him. Um, I've got to deliver it to him personally. I said I'll give it to him. What is your name? Boone. Ken Boone. Boone? Oh, come in! Boone! Uh, have we met? Uh, I, I won't be long. It's, it's just that um, typing's not my strong point. I'm, I'm much more your sort of out and about detective, me. Um. Where's the boat? What boat? The boat with my stuff on it. Her boat. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who she is. I didn't know she had a boat. Oh, Mrs. This lady rings you out of the blue, asks you to deliver a letter, and you don't even ask her name. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm a private detective. I mean, these things happen all the time. I know you're a private detective, and I know where you're from. That's why I don't believe a word you're saying. Done. Are you really going to live on it? Why not? It's romantic, isn't it? Yeah. It's horrible, Ken. Don't listen to him, Ken. And it's small. <laughs> Who built it there, Fix? It's compact. Thank you. Small. How's Popeye then? A bit short of olive oil. And he calls. <laughs> Pardon? And he calls. No, no, bugger off. How much longer can we go on like this? Oh, come on. Rocky. Oh. <sighs> Give it uh, a chance, eh? Oh, Ken. We're not going to have a cash flow problem again, are we, mate? I mean, my landlady gets a bit nasty every week Don't now. worry, Rocky, don't worry. Things are about to pick up. <laughs> yeah? I can guarantee it. What? What's this look, Harry Crawford? You've been up to something? You haven't seen the evening papers, have you? Why? No, well, just you wait, mate. Just you wait. I'm just off to get them. Very pleasant. It's a very pleasant way to make a million pounds. 
Cheers. How long to go? 40, 45 minutes, maybe. Das ist so gut. Hey? I said, das ist sehr gut. What's that? No, don't believe it. What's wrong? That sounds like the drive. Shaft. Oh, is it serious? I don't know how long to fix it. We've got a rendezvous in an hour. Well, that depends on whether someone round here knows a welder. Come on, give us a hand. I don't believe it. I could kill you. Why didn't you get a proper bloody boat? Bloody brilliant. So what do you suggest we do? I don't know. Can't park here. Private property. Says when? Since five days ago. Crawford Boone Securities. You must be joking. No, I'm not, no. You park down the road. Right. Sorry. Sorry, Chief. Now, how do we meet the boat? Crawford Boone Security. CBS. Incorporated Boone Investigation. Crawford Boone Security. Nottingham. Mark will be in touch, Mr. Marchant. And don't worry. Excuse me, please. Thank you. What time can we come through? Yes, Crawford Boone Security. Right now then, who's next then? No, uh, Mr. No worries. I'm very sorry, we're running a bit late. Mr. Jarvis. Mr. Jarvis? Mrs. Jarvis, I beg your pardon. Pardon? Oh, yes, fine. Just, uh, just hold on. Let's come this way. Of course, it's only been like this, you know, since we advertised. It's uh, very quiet before. When did you last see this? Um, uh, when did you last see this, Corporal Brodsky? 1944? Well, uh, what regiment was he with, love, when he was billeted over here? Yeah. Okay, Mrs. Josephs, we'll get back to you. No, well, I mean, I, I don't cover all of the United States, you know what I mean? Bit out of my range. Yeah, okay, love, got your number. Ken, line three. Right. Hello, Ken Boone? Yeah. Can I um, have your name, please? You don't want to give your name? Look, Mr. Boone, this is desperate. I'm desperate. I have to talk to you. Yes, OK, well, um, I'll see what I can do. Can you give me some details? Do you know that the steamboat? Oh, good. I'll be outside in two hours. Oh, I'll know you. And Mr. Boone, you must be there. I think I've done something terrible. <laughs> Hi. Are you, um... It's a nice place. You're staying here. Uh, no. I I'm afraid I can't tell you. Well, uh, what about your name? I can't tell you that either. Well, that's the start. Do I get to know why you've called me out here? I want you to deliver something for me. It's very important. It's really a matter of life and death. Why didn't you go to a courier? I need complete confidentiality. I need your assurance that you won't tell anyone, not even the police, nobody. Why? I can't say. Why not? It's nothing illegal. I just want you to deliver a letter for me. I wouldn't involve you in anything illegal. Yeah, but I, I still know... I need to know a little bit more about it. I just can't explain yet. If you won't help me, I'll just have to get someone else. I didn't say I wouldn't help you. I just... I'm desperate, Mr. Boone. 
believe me, trust me. I, I'll tell you everything later, I promise you. Just deliver this letter for me this afternoon, and then meet me here the day after tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'll explain everything then. Well, I suppose it is just a letter. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. I must go now. Hang on a minute. It's all right, don't worry. I just, um, out of interest, how did you get in touch with me? Boone Investigations, from the paper? Oh, no, I saw your sign on the riverbank. Right. OK, 10 o'clock, day after tomorrow. How's your back? I don't know. I'm right here, then. Excuse me, you can't just breeze in here like this, you know. I'm sorry, I just happen to have an unfortunate manner. Don Spee, private investigator. I just want to talk to your boss, that's all. Um, can I ask what it's about? This. What can I say? You understand what this means to my business? Yeah, and I'm sorry. Already two of my clients have cancelled contracts to see an advert in a paper like that, and they leave. 